Hello and welcome to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you could join us for a half an hour of fast-paced conversation. We're welcoming in the new year, a year that we hope is filled with peace and prosperity and health and hope and all sorts of good conversation and, you know, just kind of keeping things rolling here. So joining me today, we're a little short. Um, Cal Potter could not be with us today, but Tom Pineski, professor of mathematics at the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan Center. Happy New Year. Ken Risto, social studies teacher and doing other things in the Sheboygan Area School District is also here. Um, we're going to be talking right now about some local issues and... Can we issue an Amber Alert for, uh, for Cal? Yeah. <laughs> is it possible to do that? Where is Cal? Well, yeah. we're, we're not quite sure where Cal is, and he, bless his heart, is always the most responsible, I well, think, you know, of all of us here. You know, the governor has got all of his inauguration uh, festivities this uh, oh, today that could as be. we're taping, so I wonder if Cal's got a little Democratic donkey hat on his head and he's doing That's the samba good. someplace yeah. in Madison. And it just could be that an inauguration in Madison is a twee bit more glamorous than the Donahue uh, group. I think so. It could be, hard to believe. I'm but, skeptical about that. Well, we're going to just launch into county, <laughs> county and city issues anyway, and we know that Cal is with us in spirit. Um, one of my favorite times of year is the, um, the day after nomination papers have been filed, and you either can listen to the radio or click on to the Sheboygan Press early in the morning and to find out who's running. This is the third election in a row that the city council is, again, a very popular place to be running. One, you only have to get 20 signatures on nomination papers, which is something that most anybody can do, just kind of walking around the block. Number two, it really doesn't cost a whole lot of money to run for the city council, at least not mm -hmm. to date. Uh, so it's financially, I think, within a lot of people's um, uh, purview to do. And third, the city of Sheboygan, I think, continues to be a pretty controversial place. So your district, District 1, wins the award for five. one, two, three, four, five people running. Five people running. Um, Eldenburg, uh, and I believe Eldenburg. Tom is not one of them. And I'm not and Tom one is not. In, Although I thought about it, believe it or not. I, I think that would be a great I, idea. Did you really? I really did. I thought, well, if nobody's running or one is running, maybe I'll run. Yeah. But with so many, I thought. Yeah. Well, the key, I'm glad they're participating. The, the key yeah. in my view of all this long-term service in politics is recruitment, is you know, who, who can you get to run? Because I think it's very difficult. People, even with all the reasons I just said, you know, it's so easy to run for city council, the plain fact is, is to put your name on a ballot and ask the population to support you one way or another is pretty daunting to a lot of people, and, and, and rightly so. So it's good that people are running, and that's a positive. Yeah. That's yeah. a very much a positive. And um, some of these names I know, um, uh, Job Jose has uh, thrown his hat in the ring, Neil Altman, um, Bruce Christensen is a retired police officer, used to be that's the liaison good. officer at South High, yeah, right? Yeah, for the last, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 years of his career, yeah, Bruce was the police liaison officer over at South High. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. And is he completely retired from yes, the police department? Yes, he's been, uh, this is the second year that he's retired from the district. Okay. And from the police department, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Jim uh, Gisha, Jim, well-known Republican, um, and... Uh, he's on the radio, isn't he? A talk show or something? I don't know. He has no. one of those deep, booming... Radio okay. voices, he could be, but I, I'm not sure. Is he that the conservative he's... voice on the Friday morning the go around? There you go. Yeah, the, yeah. There you go. Really? Yeah. I think so. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think they'll be able to talk about um, city politics a whole lot on First Fridays unless he takes a leave of absence, yes, which uh, people do from time to time. That's probably what would have to happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dirk Zeilman, our friend Dirk Zeilman, who is also on that morning show, um, is running uh, for the town of Mosul town chairperson job and I believe is, is that right? Yeah, oh, and I believe is going? unopposed. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, I okay. believe uh, assuming he went through whatever snowdrifts there used to be in order to get How his nomination that? It's got to be a stepping stone to higher elected office, right. don't you think? <laughs> town chairman to... <laughs> town chairman to uh, Mosul. I sit I'm in on a lot well. of town board meetings yeah. and, I, and that is pure democracy. It's really pretty wonderful um, because people actually come to meetings. Mm -hmm. They feel like they can participate. Ordinary, everyday citizens. There's a lot of interaction, which from a parliamentary point of view may make lawyers and those of us who like parliamentary procedure a little crazy. But there's a lot of discussion back and forth between the board and people in the audience. And you get a, I mean, I don't 
want to get too misty-eyed or Norman Rockwell-ish about this, but it's really pretty pure democracy. And so, and I would assume that Dirk would run a very good meeting in the town of Mosul. This is Dirk only if you are unopposed. Otherwise, we are. If you're opposed, we're not taking any political positions here. In any event, will we lose our tax exempt status <laughs> if we start advocating for particular candidates? No. Wow. Well, you know, just there you go. Um, so we have five people running in the first district. Mm -hmm. That means for sure there is a primary on February 20th. Um, in the second district, interestingly enough, and, I'm, and this is the headline um, uh, on the day after nomination papers are due, I mean, really, top of the fold, Susha, Renee Susha is not running for council again. Because she didn't file a declaration of non-candidacy, it's my understanding that people can, that extends the nomination paper time now until the end of the week. So if anybody, and I'm in that district, wants to get involved, uh, Lyle um, Vanderweist, very nice guy, our next door neighbor, um, is running, a retired police officer. And um, a fella actually down the block from us as well, Corey Book, who is, um, uh, I'm not sure what Corey does, I think he's a financial officer mm -hmm. in a local okay. business, are running. Um, did Renee Susha deserve to be top of the fold uh, today with the news that she's not running? Well, I think people are a little tired of reading about Gerald Ford's funeral. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, was, uh, it's been a lengthy long. affair. Yeah, a little long, yeah. It a really long. has. I mean, it, it's no longer than any other, other ex-president, but I mean, it just seems to fly the bodies around and all that. So, yeah. I, I, you know, it's a slow news day at the Sheboygan Press, and I suppose that uh, having an alder, a person who's been that visible and, and deciding not yeah. to run is, is, you know, reasonably good news or bad news, depending on your point of view. So we have mm -hmm. two ex-police officers running. So right. far as, as we go down the list. Right, yeah. right. I'm just wondering if we're going to have more ex-police officers. <laughs> or, um, does Jack Webb run? No, he's dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. sorry. And I'm, James working Garner. On, I'm not working and James on a lot of, I'm not working on a lot of sleep today. I'm yeah, sorry. police officer spouses. Uh, yeah, so that's right. We're going to have that. Well, <laughs> now, 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 now. Um, yeah. In the third uh, district, um, there's a very nice young man who's the current incumbent who was appointed, Dan Verhassel, tonight. Is this his first election? Yes. After I'm appointment? I'm pretty sure it's his first, yeah. And okay. Dimple Adams, a well-known uh, person to the, um, uh, to the city council, is running. And Scott Lewandowski. Now, Scott, who has run for office a number of times, has also... Um, uh, tried to get appointed to the council and to the school board, uh, has enough signatures, it is my understanding, to run for the school board mm -hmm. and to run for city council. So S Scott's yeah. going to be a busy guy. Scott was uh, at Central yesterday when I was uh, wandering through the halls looking mm -hmm. for work. <laughs> and, and he was there with his nomination forms in hand and he was uh, handing them over. So I'm assuming if they were, you know, he's got the signatures, that uh, he's running for the school board at the same time he's running for the city council. Right. And, I mean, it's not unusual. Juan Perez was exactly yep. a son school board and on the city council at the same time. Well, and when we so. scoot down to the 7th District with Barbara Tashinsky, who's a current school board yeah. member. Oh, sure. No one can level the criticism now, however, that you can't be on both because, of yeah. course, Mayor Perez was. And, um, yeah. and Mark Hanna actually resigned, and there was about 15 minutes difference or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hear about that at the YMCA, but I mean, there, I think there was, there was some, some, some degree of separation between him leaving the school board and, and being elected. Yes, uh, like one the, degree. But, yeah, uh, it wasn't much. It so, wasn't much. So the school board sort of the stepping stone to the city council. Huh? And, and isn't that, that, an, isn't like that an odd kind <laughs> of... A, uh, <laughs> because locally I'm, you run in a local area, and the school board you have to run citywide, so you really right. have to appeal to more people. Citywide right. and a couple of towns thrown yeah. in there. But um, mm. So uh, there will be a primary in the 3rd District, 4th District, your district, I believe. Yes, indeed. Um, we have three people <clears throat> running. Jim Groff. Dan Berg is back. Dan Berg is back. Um, and that'll well, he be... threatened uh, or promised us he would be returning, right. depending again on your point of view. Yeah. 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 And Joe Heidemann is running Joe again. Heidemann. He's running again, yeah. Now, yeah. he did not make it through the primary last time. Is that, that correct? That's correct. Uh, and again, just for full disclosure, I know Joe pretty well. He and I are friends. And, uh, and we make Joe, no endorsements here? So. No, we're not making endorsements, but um, Joe's from Sheboygan Falls originally, uh, native of Sheboygan Falls, moved into town three or four years back. and. Did pretty well as a first-time candidate. Um, I know some people were really um, pushing him or uh, encouraging him to think about a county supervisor seat, but 
Uh, but yeah, he's back running for the seat, and it'd be interesting. I, you know, I, it's a little early to make predictions, but I got a feeling he's going to survive this time and face uh, Jim Graff. Yeah, uh, I think Jim has come through a pretty brutal process. As I say, if we have yeah. a little time to to just weigh in on the John Doe, and yeah. the John Doe, it makes us sound very important, you know, that Sheboygan has a John Doe, but in any event, uh, so there's a, a primary there. Uh, fifth District, Jane, uh, Gene Davis, um, yeah. very nice guy, um, on the county board for a long time, was on the city council just one term and has decided not to run again. So Eric Rinfleisch, who had previously been on the council mm -hmm. and is the son of Ron Rinfleisch, long-term uh, school board member, is running, and Susan Lassard, I don't know I don't Susan know at Susan, all. Do I, don't, I, yeah. I don't either, okay. so That's it'll be interesting right. to find out what, what uh, she's all about. And in the 6th District, Jeff Radke is going to have a primary. Anthony Gartman, who I don't, do not know, uh, and Bill Wangaman, a former alder person and city historian, right? Don't we call him that? Yep. yep. And, yes, he uh, is. Who writes delightful columns, uh, I think. Yeah. I, and he was a distant cousin of mine. Is, is that, that right? Oh, yes. oh that's yes. an endorsement. <laughs> no, very I'm distant. Just, uh, yeah. very distant. <laughs> my, my mother, my dad's mother was a Wangaman. My grandmother, Risto, was a Wangaman. Well, and... And so there's some kind of connection there. Now, he's going to be very upset that... Well, never mind. Um, it's a distant relation, so... Seventh District, um, uh, there will not be a... Um, um, uh, a primary, primary apparently, uh, but Alderman uh, uh, Vicki Meyer, who is just um, in her second term, or is running Finishing, for her second yeah, term. She's going to be starting a second term. Running against Barbara Tyshinsky, the leader, by all, uh, as I understand it from reading the Sheboygan Press, the leader of the recall effort mm -hmm. uh, against Mayor Perez. <clears throat> that's going to be interesting. I think that's going to be an interesting race. Vicki ran a good uh, campaign last time, and Barbara runs a good campaign. Exactly. So I think that'll be an interesting uh, race, and people have to decide. Yeah, I think um, um, maybe it'll be a, an, yet another referendum on public opinion as relates to the recall. Um, oh, absolutely! That's what this election is all about. You look at the you look at the, cha you look at the challengers, and I mean, go through the list. I, I really don't know. I, I Joe and I Heidemann have not talked uh, about that, but I don't sense that Joe has a particularly strong feeling about the mayor one way or the other. He could, and he's never shared it with me. But when you have two former police officers, a spouse of a police officer, who ran was the spokesperson for the recall effort. Um, and uh, we haven't talked yet about the 8th District yet, so we're kind of, kind of jumping the gun here. But this is clearly w one more time of uh, a vote on, uh, it's a referendum on Juan Perez. Right. Yeah, interesting. To a degree. Yeah. Eric Rinfleisch is, is certainly probably pretty neutral, I would think, I on would the topic. Think. Well, Although you got he, Dan uh, Berg running, so he's not yeah, a Dan police Berg officer. Is, yeah, Dan, yeah, Dan <laughs> Berg is no fan of Juan Perez. He's made that very clear. And I think yeah. Eric is a wonderful young man. Yep. But remember, he ran... And a former Claire, student of mine. He ran um, Kurt Zempel's campaign oh, yes. against mm. Terry Van Akron did and a did a wonderful job and Kurt Semple is a police officer. So um, Yes, he is now. Yeah, he, he wasn't when he ran. He was not when he ran, but he is now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Kurt's a, Kurt's a very nice young man, although he's had some trouble. Um, and then in the 8th District, um, Marilyn Montemayor Marilyn. is unchallenged. So there is one, uh, Dustin Havens, who uh, has run several times, um, and I think if yeah. he had... Um, yeah, it would have been a good race, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, I think uh, it is just going to be interesting one more time. I, uh, mm -hmm. We need a little, a little uh, constancy or something about the council to keep changing every two years or every year. Uh, new people, uh, they come in with you know, great ideas, and, but they still have to learn how to function in the council. And to make things happen, the department heads are there. They, they kind of know what they want. And, and you spend the first year, first two years, learning about the city council and yeah. learning who the department heads are and uh, being able to just walk in and talk to them and things like that. But if you keep changing, <laughs> yeah. you just, mm -hmm. you're going to be in flux or turmoil a little bit. Uh, so maybe some of the uh, uh, regulars will win, may, uh, but if you get new ones, it's, it's you, just interesting as to how long it is taking the council to, it's what I call calm down, but to um, become a little less, hmm, I don't even know how to express it because I'm tired too, but uh, um, a little less focused on controversy and a little bit 
more um, focused on on just the everyday issues. Well, well, it, well, I guess I'm kind of surprised because um, as you're describing that, I wouldn't describe this last council, this last year on the council, as, as being that. I, you know, I think overall they were fairly productive and, and there, oh, wasn't, yeah. there wasn't, I mean, the, we got the police uh, issue resolved relatively, you know, with a lot, not a lot of rancor. Uh, we've got the budget proposed and, and passed, um, and that was, I thought it was a good, uh, some good great, it was a good debate. Um, you know, and this, then it was really it was I watched the council meetings. You know, where are we going to put the doggy poop park, and you know the stuff that city councils have to you know have to grapple with and grapple with rather. And grapple, <laughs> grapple. Yeah, that's so I got okay. at four o'clock. Getting up at four o'clock this morning, and you know, but but I can't say that I really would you know saw them in, in these, these camps glaring at one another. So I thought that was actually fairly productive, and I was fairly optimistic that this time would go on. They'd learn to work more and more together and continue to be productive. And that and that may well happen. And I, yeah. I would agree with you. I do think that this last year has been really quite productive. Yeah. Um, I think that the budget that the council brought in was pretty stunning, and we talked about this, I'm, I'm sure, in, in, in another show, so we won't spend too much time on it, but um, that was, I thought, good leadership from the mayor as well as from the council. Um, finally putting the, the, um, the police station to rest, I thought was huge, and it's just that there just seems to be ongoing, ongoing controversy. I, I get, I, I, I'm very inarticulate at expressing well, exactly I, what it is, but my, it's it's I, not a quiet group. It's not know, the county board. I, it's not the school board at this point. When I came on uh, in the in late 70s and spent my time in, on the council in the 80s, I had role models, mm -hmm. people who had been around for a while, and we dressed properly. We stood and said, Your Honor. I mean, I watched the role, and if I didn't do that, I was mm -hmm. told to do that. Yes. So, uh, and we don't have too many role models. Uh, there's been a few people, a couple of people that have been around a long mm -hmm. time. Jim Graff has been around what, 20 something years. Uh, but when you keep changing, you don't have any role models. And that's an excellent point. Um, not only from the point of view of decorum and how you conduct business and <clears> so forth. I remember when I got elected to the um, Board of Governors for the State Bar, there was actually an entire session about how you conducted yourself at Board of yeah. Governor meetings. Mm -hmm. And the dress code was very clear. Mm -hmm. And I remember having that same, there wasn't that kind of formality on the school board, but there were people exactly who were there to teach you how to do business. And then secondly, those are the same folks who bring history to mm -hmm. the process and say, not that we always have to do it this way, but in the past, this is how we've done it. And I have always found that those historical folks, the, the keepers of the word, as it were, are yep. hugely helpful when you're trying to do business and figure out, particularly whether you're on the school board or the council or county board, where you're really doing the people's business, um, it's helpful to have that kind of, kind of guidance. And probably, you're right, there just isn't that <coughs> much at this point, point. Uh, on the council. And, and they need to look out, from my viewpoint, I think they need to look out and see help the city continue to grow. It's been growing, we're making progress, let's keep it moving in that right. direction. Let's don't all of a sudden put up fences and close. I think, you know, they, like the council put up a fence last, last night saying that only citizens could speak, they have the top priority speaking on the open forum. They should, and I agree with Bonnie Serta. It's no big issue, just it'll take care of itself. Whoever first come, first serve, you know, it's open council already. So the, this current council just put up a little fence. Citizens get top priority. Well, Plus, that's, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. Of course, the school board resolves that, I think, pretty much by letting everybody speak. Uh, right. There are no numbers. There are, okay. Um, sometimes when there's a controversial issue, the president of the board will ask, Is, are you all here to speak on this one topic and, and maybe try to get one or two spokespeople for the whole group? But if, mm -hmm. if not, they just keep going. And I don't think that that's necessarily such a bad idea. You could do that on, if you were to convene committee of the whole meetings on a regular basis, you could devote a half an hour, 45 minutes to people just coming in. The people elect you. They want to talk to you. <laughs> Therefore, you're there. Exactly. You sit there. If, it's, you get, if you sit another hour, you yeah. sit another hour and listen. And the council chambers now, now we're getting into minutiae, but they really rearranged it so that people, alter 
aldermen don't have to turn around to look at who's speaking and, and so forth. And so I think those are Oh, yeah, are they come things. up and speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's good to have time limits. That's only fair. But uh, I, I, uh, I thought that was an interesting, an interesting piece. So, yeah. well, there will be um, a primary on uh, February 20th. 20th. And yeah. uh, we'll probably take some predictions uh, in our February show as uh, the issues come out. And, um, Tom, did you have a primary when you ran? When I, no, I did have a primary. Okay, the reason I'm asking is, you know, it's really not that far away, and when you have, and say, in your district, five, pe six people? So five people Five running. people running. Yeah. Uh, do you, I mean, how much time does that give you to really get your message out about what you stand for, what you want to run on, and, and those types it's of things? It's not. I mean, when I didn't have a primary, I went around door to door, and uh, yeah. uh, I left a brochure. I had a brochure, so and some, I talked to some people, but... But uh, that took me up to April. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, you, yeah, they won't be able is, to do that. They won't be able to do that. Yeah, working yeah. doors is a long grind. Yeah. So I think whoever has um, either the better machine, the better campaign organization, or if you capture just the right issue and are able to make hay on just, just the right issue, that can make you stand above the pack sometimes. But with five people, that's... Yeah. That's very difficult, so it'll be interesting to see. Beat only by how many people ran for governor after uh, Gray Davis was recalled. Was it 256 oh, yeah. people? <laughs> yeah, I really wanted my daughter to run. She lives in San Diego. I said, I'm willing to pay your $10,000 fee or whatever it is because yeah. how often can you put on your resume? Ran for governor. Governor of the state of California. <laughs> yeah. I really don't know much about Neil Altman. I'm, the reason I'm asking is because, you know, I, you know, Jose, you know, ran as a self-described conservative. I've known Bruce for a long time at North, uh, South, rather, and he certainly would call himself a conservative. At least he did yeah. to my face all the time when he was attacking me as a liberal. Um, and, you know, obviously James is a, is, is a conservative voice in WHBL for those forums on Friday. Now, is I that don't know Tim much about... Lorenz? Is Tim yeah, Lorenz. it's the Democratic Party whip or whatever it is. Well, but so. Tim and Sandy, I thought, lived in Sheboygan Falls. Well. And so I'm not oh, sure if that's okay. the same Tim See, Lorenz. I, that was my question. I was wondering yeah. if that's Tim, because if you've got, you know, three, you know, I don't know how, how much, how conscious people are of those things or how aware they are of those, those, those three, but if you've got three, at least three, of those similar positions or similar political positions coming in, you know, how many of those how many people are going to survive? Uh, the, the and how process. many people are going to vote, you know, too. Yeah. 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 Well, um, it'll, be, um, it'll be very interesting, and I, I know the mayor's looking at it. We have some school board races. I just want to touch on that. The school board gets very little coverage these days, and, um, uh, and in a way that's good, but in a way that's not so good. Um, there are two town spots and one city spot up for election. Um, there will be a contest. Um, there are three people running for the two town spots. Oh, okay. Jeff Squire, who's the president, current president of the school board, is running for re-election. Mark Mansell was appointed just a couple of months ago when Teresa Blundell resigned. And uh, Al Yante, who's a former uh, principal at Jefferson, Jefferson. School, who okay. is retired, is running. And then the city spot, um, Myshua Vang uh, is um, not running. She's only having a fifth baby. I'm not sure. <laughs> Why can't you be on the school, school board, board too? She's a remarkable woman and wonderful to, you know, I'm very glad she's having another, an, another child. But she was, she was, I thought, an articulate spokesperson for the Hmong community, as well as just the community in general. Uh, Scott Lewandowski and Fong Lee, um, I believe, will have their signatures certified today and, and will be running. Um, uh, Fong Lee is an interesting fellow. He um, has a bachelor's degree in biology from Lakeland College, and um, his wife is in the human resources department at um, uh, Kohler. Okay. And they have three little kids, little, little kids, the oldest of whom goes to the Early Learning Center. Um, and I just read his biography. I found it to be quite interesting. And then we all know Scott Lewandowski because Scott is kind of the Harold Stassen, as it, as it were, of, of the Sheboygan area. Um, Scott has run for office, to his credit, um, a number of times for the council, but now is also thrown in uh, for the school board. Right. 
and uh, and it'll be interesting because I believe Scott is a substitute teacher and won't. He, he has worked at South High School. I've talked to him a little bit here yeah. and there when he's been in the building. Yeah, and so um, it'll be interesting to have those contested races. And uh, yeah, so. I am. Um, I, I I'm think assuming that Scott, if he were elected, could not be a substitute teacher anymore. That's correct. I right. mean, that would be my understanding. Um, but so we'll be getting letters to the editor from people who are supporting so-and-so candidates, why we should vote for them, and we'll be getting... That might be a way of advertising, actually. That's gotten, in my opinion, that's a pretty effective, fairly new way of campaigning, which is to get people to write a lot of letters to the editor. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, positive mostly, but some of us have been the victim of not so positive but, letters. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's, uh, I think people pay attention because you could see in school board races where the top vote getter was the person who was m most active in terms of getting letters to the editor. And I, I mean, in terms of campaigning, well, I thought name, that had to be. It, it's just name recognition, you know, and yeah. a lot of people don't know you. Oh, I've seen that name. Oh, I've seen that name. It's sure. Yeah, I've seen that. Oh, I'll vote for that exactly. name. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We don't have a huge amount of time left. A couple things going on in the county. Um, it looks as if potentially the sale of Sunny Ridge will go through to a private entity. The nursing home will stay open and be operated by a Minneapolis-based um, organization whose name is totally escaping me at this point. Uh, the county is going to be throwing in $3 million over a period of time for upgrades and so forth. But the idea is, is that the county will be saving about $14 million over the six-year period, I think it is. Um, so I, that sounds, it sounds positive from the taxpayer's perspective. I know from the union perspective that I would expect that the wages and benefits paid by the private entity will certainly not match those of the county. But I guess the bottom line would be, are they, I mean, are the people who need the service, are they, the clients, so to speak, are they going to be treated uh, well? And, uh, yeah. yeah, so, so it's, uh, I could be a, 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 a decent arrangement as long as the clients are treated well and this county could save money. Yeah. Uh, it will be interesting to see if it comes out that wages and benefits are going to be reduced, whether they're going to be able to maintain the kind of care that care. people have become accustomed to. And uh, yeah. time will tell, I imagine, about that. Right. We'll yeah. see. Because um, the county was essentially, I think, paying a living wage. Um, $7 an hour, uh, $7.50 an hour, I think, by any stretch, is not a living no, wage. You can't, living you wage. can't no. support a family on that. No. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And um, finally, um, Oh, there was one other action. The, the county board, um, which usually doesn't have real controversial votes, had a 17-15 vote on the uh, smoking ban. Uh, Roger Otten had introduced a resolution to ban smoking within 25 feet of county buildings and on the inside of some other county buildings, and it went down to defeat at a 17-15 vote. And uh, so... And then finally, we just have a few seconds left. Maybe one of the reasons that even more people don't run for the city council is that there's a good chance that when you speak to a friend, that friend is going to be wearing a wire. I, th <laughs> oh, <that's, yeah. laughs> I thought that the John Doe investigation was, was, was most interesting. Spooky. <laughs> it was, it was a little eerie. spooky. Yeah, and I think wire. when I was talking about just the, the, the continuing yes. sense of dysfunction of that council is that you have to be careful about who you're talking to. I don't I know, but wire. we wire. have been talking to you <laughs> folks in Sheboygan, and uh, Happy New Year. We'll see you again.